It is the start of a new women's college basketball season. And as always, questions are asked, which will be answered during the course of the season. Will Paige Beckers return to her old form? Will Ice Brady be the forward UConn needs? But one question that we have asked over the last three years at the start of the season is, will AZ Fudd develop into a star? It reminds me of the old football question, do you have a quarterback or not? Now, my Texans, I'm pretty happy with C.J. Stroud. But other teams, and I've had teams like this, the Schaub years, it is just not real clear. So you have to ride that roller coaster that is maddening. Some games, you're like, they've got it. And then the next game, you are like, what is going on? Yes. This is the house that the Buffalo Bills are living in with Josh Allen. And to some extent, this is what UConn is dealing with with AZ Fudd. And the question is, is she a star, overrated, or a Pippin, i.e. a sidekick? In this video, I am going to argue the case for her being each one of these and then give you my opinion on what I think she is and I want to get your feedback as well. The star scenario. Well, a star was born, really, AZ Fudd was always meant to be a star. Her mom was a former basketball player and got her into basketball early. Her dad played ball as well, and they were very invested in her doing well, as all parents are. And sure enough, she won Gatorade National High School Player of the Year as a sophomore. But in some ways, this award is a curse as it puts the weight of expectation on you from your sophomore year that you are special and you have to live up to that. And for FUD, the biggest roadblock so far to stardom has been her health. She blew out her knee at Team USA camp after her sophomore year, but was able to make a full recovery. But then since arriving at UConn, she has battled injuries each of her first two years. First with a stress reaction in her foot and then suffering knee injuries in her sophomore year. At the start of the sophomore year, it felt like it was her time to shine as Beckers was out and Fudd was as healthy as she had ever been and she came out of the gate on a heater. She averaged 24 points per game while shooting the lights out from three to carry the Huskies to early season victories over their tough non-conference schedule and shined in the win over Texas. But then she sustained a knee injury when Edwards was pushed into her knee, which was again re-aggravated later in the season when she got kneed again playing Georgetown. She returned just prior to the tournament and was a shell of herself. With Fudd saying that I felt like my practices before Ohio State weren't great and my confidence was down, so when they started pressing, I didn't really want much to do with the ball. She finished the game with 14 points, but shot 6 of 17 from the field, 2 from 9 from 3, and turned the ball over four times as UConn's season came to an end much earlier than expected as well. There are a few moments in the game where she had a chance to attack the basket and she wanted nothing to do with it. And well, this leads us into is AZ Fudd overrated? Now, if you are a supporter of hers and believe she is a star, then you blame this on bad luck with injuries as she has missed 40 out of 73 games. But sports is cruel, hence the saying in the NFL, you cannot make the club from the tub, and in many ways, you are based on your numbers. And to be fair, her numbers are good. She's averaged 13 points and 39% from the three-point line. But based on those numbers and her availability, is she overvalued on the ESPN Top 25 players list? The players that she is ahead of on the ESPN list, like Cardoso, Amor, 
Morrow, Haley Van Lith at 17, Citron at Notre Dame, Latston, Ledger Walker, Osborne, and Kelly all have better numbers and have played more consistently. Yet does Fudd get a bump because she's playing for the IE Dallas Cowboys of women's college basketball UConn. And I do think there's some of that, but overall, I think this is all based on potential and where we rank potential. So I think she's high on this list because you see her beautiful shot and you think, man, if she puts it together with a healthy season, wow, it's unbelievable what a great player she is. And when she is out on the court, she just does everything right. And that overall, her numbers are hurt by being around such good players at UConn and her doing everything, giving the pass at the right time. And finally, that leads me to... Paige Becker's coming back, and is she Paige's Pippin, if you like? Because as Gino Oriyama describes her, she is a reluctant star. Gino, what are your expectations for AZ this year? She her own worst enemy at times. I mean, we saw how good she can be last year, pre-injury. Well, I said before, she's a reluctant superstar. You know, she's a reluctant superstar. I think she has all the qualities that that star players have you know she's she's good at every facet of the game and um, she wants to be a great teammate she wants to make sure that everything goes well and uh, you know I want her to be super aggressive and I want her to be a risk taker and I want her to just put it all out there and you know try to get 40 every night you know why not? Um, so, little by little, it's working. You know, she's been much, much more aggressive um, at, to this point this year than oh, that, last year. She was super aggressive because she she she, she knew we didn't have Paige, and I just don't want her to back off of that now just because Paige is here. As she just wants to do the right thing, get all her teammates involved, and feels real uncomfortable being selfish and sometimes to be a star you need to be a bit of an a-hole think of some of the stars in our lifetime like jordan and kobe it was always i'm going to eat first and get my shots and as well that's combined with a bit of irrational confidence you know i've missed 15 shots in a row and hell i should keep shooting that's a good thing for my team because the next 15 will definitely be going in and she really does not have that. Like they were talking about when they were in Europe and how she was missing shots and how she was so proud of herself because she sort of forced herself to keep on shooting even though the ball was not going in. And I think that's a hard skill to learn. I think in some ways, either have it or you don't. You either think you're the best player on the court and should shoot a hell of a lot or don't. And I think it almost, with Becker's coming back, I think that hinders her ability to potentially reach that star level as it's just so easy to defer to Paige Beckers and say, yep, you take it over here. Things are tight. Now it's time for you. But that doesn't mean she's going to be any less of a player or not great or anything like that. If she stays healthy, and hopefully that can be the case this season, she is the perfect complementary player in my opinion a sidekick, and there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever, as that's what UConn needs, and that's what she's comfortable being. As she gives Beckers space to work, as they cannot double Beckers and leave her alone because she'll crush them with her shot, but at the same time, she gives Paige Beckers and Edwards and Descharm just options because she reads the court so well. And if they do come at her with a double team, then she will make the right pass or find the correct player. And it should be a beautiful thing. So overall, is she currently overrated in my opinion? Yes. I don't think she should be number 11 on ESPN's list. I think that's a bit of based on potential and everybody's hope that AZ FUD can be healthy. Now, what are your thoughts? Overrated? A reluctant superstar who will turn into a star this year? Or is she Scotty Pippen? By the way, there's nothing wrong with being a Scotty Pippen. Six rings, hell of a player. Sure, Jordan screwed him on his documentary. 
but being Scotty Pippen isn't that bad. Somebody needs to be a Robin, and I think she might be just Robin to Paige Becker's Batman.